Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name again is Ademi Babalola, and today I'll be sharing some IELTS speaking tips with you. Now, you know that the IELTS speaking test lasts 11 to 14 minutes. How can you make sure that you speak well within this very short time? And you know that you're answering at least 10 questions. So how do you want to answer the questions in a way that you are correct? You speak clearly, you have the flow and it's all you know coherent and all of that. So I'm going to share some speaking tips with you today. And it's not just talking, I'm going to be giving you examples. Okay, so we have company, yes, but let's see how, well, how far we can go. So I'm going to be showing you examples from, you know, the books, the Cambridge IELTS books that we have, so that you understand the kinds of questions that you can expect to find in the IELTS speaking part one, part two and part three. So the first tip I'm going to share is make sure you pay attention to the tense of your question. That's is it present tense, is it past tense or is it future tense? Let me read you this question. This is from IELTS, this is Cambridge IELTS book um, 11 and I'm reading you what we have in part one. So the first question says, what sorts of food do you like eating most? What sorts of food do you like eating most? Now, this is a present tense question. It's like something you do regularly, you do from time to time. So the question is, what do you like? What, what food do you enjoy? It's like asking you what your favorite food is. You're not going to talk about the past or the future. You're going to talk about the present. So you say something like, um, I love eating spicy food because I just like to feel the that oddness in my mouth and you know it keeps you it keeps you um i don't know what word to use right now but the idea is you can tell that the question is a present tense question it keeps you in love with the food something like that well it's all up to you the way you want to answer that but what i'm trying to emphasize is when you hear a question when the examiner says a question what you want to do first is ask yourself what tense is the question in the next question yes says who normally does the cooking in your house now you see that the adverb normally has been included to this so it's a question of right now in the present time in this 2020 this is november in november who normally does the cooking who is responsible for breakfast and lunch and dinner or whatever way you add it so you're going to answer in present tense as well and since it says who Okay, you need to mention a name of a person or just tell us who the person is, even if you're not going to say the name of the person, give us an identity of somebody we can refer to. Okay, hi boy, how are you doing? Okay, so the next question is, do you watch cookery programs on TV? You can see that do. Do you? That's present tense, okay? So it says, do you watch cookery programs on TV? If you're going to answer that, you, it's, it's a polar question, yes. Or no but you're not just going to stop at the yes or no you want to tell us what you do you know why you do it so if it is a yes you want to tell us a little more about what cooking programs you watch and remember to paraphrase the words that you hear that's another tip don't say the exact words that you hear so if the examiner uses um, cookery programs you can say um, um, TV shows that focus on food recipes or something like that. You can always say it in a different way. So just make sure that you are, first of all, aware of the sense of the question. It's still dealing with something in the present, in this time. And the final one here says, in general, do you prefer eating out or eating at home? You see that it's still, do you prefer? It's still in the present time. So the first most important tip is pay attention to the tense of the question okay my son is on it is is right here let's just proceed now um so another thing you want to pay attention to is you see that the questions are just about you they are personal questions so that's another important ielts speaking tip make sure that you are you are free because these questions are about you they are personal questions nothing is technical or overly serious okay and then when you get to Okay, so when you get to part two, um, this one now says you should describe a house that someone you know lives in. That tense is also present, lives in. So you're not talking about somebody in the past. 
and it says someone you know so it says somebody you know right now it's not somebody that is dead but somebody that's going to be born in the future <laughs> if i can say that so you see that the tense thing really plays a great role in how you answer daddy what are you doing are you stuck or do you need help do you need help okay move your leg yes that's it that's it sorry about the distraction it needed it needed to get on stock okay so you see that the question is a present tense. someone you know someone you know lives in it's still in the current time so nothing has changed about it and then you know these the questions that's the bullet points in between tell you whose house or apartment this is where the house or apartment is and explain what you like or dislike about this person's house or apartment okay so you can play with that okay yeah i just need to distract him so we can make progress okay so you see that the tense is in the now okay so if you are guided if you're focusing on the tense you would know how to speak your grammar would be intact because you know there's a criterion of grammatical range and accuracy and honestly the way you pick your tenses and form them would actually determine how your sentences themselves will play out. So you want to try to do it as correctly as possible. Ah. Yes, boy. I'll soon be through. Okay. Another tip you want to... So if you see the same thing plays out in part three. Another thing you want to pay attention to is... Um, okay. So the next thing you want to pay attention to is the use of adverbs. Okay. Or... Yes, adverbs that have to do with frequency or how regular or how regular something is. That's another thing. Yeah, boy, take take this. Take. Okay, how regular a thing is. How often does that thing happen? For example, look at this question. How easy is it to find a place to live in? To live in your country, okay? How easy is it to find a place to live in your country? So it's looking at degree okay you're looking at degree you're looking at um uh, convenience and possibility so you want to say okay it's quite easy it's difficult it's relatively easy something like that you want to talk to an extent and many of these questions or questions like this actually come on in the ielts test let me open test two so that you can see what we have there okay now look at this one. The very first question for the IELTS speaking test two in this same book, um, 11 says, how often do you go out with friends? So you're going to be telling us something specific every day, every weekend, once in a month. You see that you're giving um, the extent of something. So that's another question that, that is actually common in the IELTS test. But pay attention, the IELTS speaking says, but pay attention to questions where um, you are asked to talk about other people. Like the next question here says, tell me about your best friend at school. This time around, the question is not about you. The question is about your friend. So you don't want to go, you know, you don't just want to start speaking and start talking about your friend. This is about, not about yourself. You want to talk about your friend. So um, my friend's name is this. And you know, she's that, she's this and that. We've known each other for so so years. Something brief and simple, but just make sure that you are not talking about yourself. Okay. Um, so that's another one. Then um now look at this past two question that says describe a writer you would like to meet. Describe a writer you would like to meet. Now look at this question. It's not something you're talking about somebody else. Okay, and this is not something that's happening right now because you intend to meet the person later and you would love to meet the person. So it's not something you're doing in the now. Okay, because the tense says you would like to meet. When you're speaking, you describe the person because the person exists right now, yes? So you, if I want to meet Chimamanda Adichie, I'll take her. I'd love to meet Chimamanda um, Ngozi Adichie. She's written so many interesting books, including. Um, of the yellow sun and purple biscuits and all of that i'd like to know what inspired her to write you know did you get that i'd like to i'd like to it's not a case of i you're not talking in the now you're going to focus on you're going to talk in that um futuristic tense uh, if i can say that it's a a case of this is what would be so it's not something that's happened and it's not something that's happened right happening right now 
it's it's you're gonna speak in terms of possibility okay so the ten said you would like to meet so when you're speaking to be a case of i'd love to know this i'd like to learn that and all of it and as much as possible keep it informal so that um you are answering the speaking questions in the tone that's expected of you let's look at test three let's look at what the questions look like here now you see look at this one again in part one you have what type of photos do you like taking do you like taking that's present tense so do you like selfies because you have to be specific specific selfies or group photos or um, what do they call these ones um, I can't remember the name now but the one where you have um, it's just some framed you know like headshots framed kind of thing I, I don't know what it's called right now but the idea is the question is till sorry darling you need to eat something right I'll be with you soon okay I'll be with you soon so oh boy did you just bite me <laughs> children okay so the idea is um you're talking in the present tense and you're going to be accurate to give example you give an example of what it is that you're talking about okay so take this yes <laughs> i just need to do something to keep it busy okay so um now look at the next question what do you do with the photos you take it's still present tense what do you do so is it that you you share them on social media or you save them to your google photos something like that your response is accurate and correct and it's still present tense okay the tense doesn't change um i want to try to look for other questions now look at this other question like i talked about degree where where i said um you know you have to to relate it to a certain degree so you have Two of us are speaking now. I hope you can hear me. How important do you think it is for everyone to check what the next day's weather will be? How important do you think it is for everyone to check what the next day's weather will be? How important? Now, this is a degree question. It is essential. It's vital. It's, you know, it's um, not so important. You can say something like that if that's what you think. But the idea is... You're asking of your opinion, degree, to what extent you feel something should be, you know, what it is. So make sure you are listening to the question. Listen to the terms, listen to the degree, you know, do you have the adverbs in it? Do you have anything asking you to bring in your opinion to an extent? Look at this other one. How easy or difficult is it? to predict the weather in your country how easy or difficult it is so you're going to um is it rather so you're going to be using degree words quite very so extremely highly never not so you get it so these are the kind of words that you know would show your the extent to which you're talking about something okay boy let me Abby, let me change it for you okay he seems to be doing it by himself so let's just continue Okay, so let me show you another one. Now look at this one that's taking us to the past. You notice that questions I read from part one, the Arab speaking part one, looked at the, the tense was mostly present, present, present tense. Now look at this part one. The first question here says, how did your parents choose your name? How did your parents choose your name? Did is past tense. So when you're speaking, you're going to be talking about what happened in the past. I was told that um, it took my parents a long time to have a baby, so eventually when I was born, I was named so, 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 something like that. So, do you get it? I maintained the past tense. Let me show you another question. Um, if you could change your name, would you? This is a hypothetical question. So it's not as if it is happening in real life. You are not changing your name, but they're asking if you could change your name, would you? So if you're going to answer this, you say something like, um, yes. I'd like to change my name because I realize it's so common and I'll prefer something that's not so common. It's not so popular around. I, I want something, I'll prefer something unique and uncommon or rare, something like that. That's just the kind of response. Let me help you. Bring it. Bring it. Let me change it for you. Raise it up. Oh boy. Okay, let's just continue. I'm going to have to wrap up soon. So, so but you, do you get the idea? Um, of a question of what I'm trying to say. The idea is 
Some questions are past, some questions are present, that's in the present tense, and some are in the future tense, and some are simply hypothetical. They are not exactly real. So you want to talk in that would-be sense. Let me read you this past two question now from this same book. It says, describe a, doc a TV documentary you watched that was particularly interesting. Can you get the tense? Past tense. It's simply past tense. You watched that was particularly interesting. So you're going to be talking, you, you most likely give us the name of the documentary because even the bullet points down say what the document was about, why you decided to watch it, what you learned during the documentary and explain why the TV documentary was particularly interesting. So you see that it's all past tense. So if you're going to be saying something about um, wild animals, you probably tell us the title of the documentary, when you watched it, was it in 2018? With your family and friends somewhere was it christmas time just create that scenario around it to make sure that it is in the past tense so that every sentence that you make would be talking about um the past that's it for book 11. i just wanted to show you you know the role that tense plays in this ielts speaking um tests that's like that's like one of the most common um uh, um, should I say dictator or something for questions? It's just something that you want to look out for. What tense is the question in? Is it in the present tense? Is it in the past tense? Or is it in the future tense? And you know that the questions, the questions have nearly the same pattern. Do you think? What is? What are? How do you? Um, is it? How easy? You know, these are the, these are the, the forms. That the IELTS um, questions take. If we look at this last one here in part three, it says, How important are regulations on TV advertising? How important? You see that they are degree questions. So you need to answer with the you know the ideal adverbs. So okay, I think this is it. Let's just do this for today. Um, you've been able to see, you know, some of the things that you need to know when it comes to the IELTS speaking. Pay attention to your tenses, pay attention to the, the form of the question, the tone of the question, what is he asking you? What is the question asking you for? And don't forget that you don't just say one thing. You don't just say yes, and that's all. You say no. Make sure you expand your answer to an extent. So I'm glad I could share this with you again today. I hope that we'll see you again in another video. Don't forget that you can take the IELTS mock test with IELTS take ielts.net, take ielts.net. You'll find the link in my description box. And once again, if you need to improve your English, please make sure you visit englishnijah.com. Once again, my name is Adeni Kerr Babalola. I wish you a wonderful time. Okay, that's my son <laughs> saying goodbye. All right then, see ya, bye.